Mr. Nilesha is a very familiar and popular face of the mutual fund industry. It is my privilege to welcome him. Nilesh Bhai is a gold medalist, Charada content, and a veteran of the investment management world. He was earlier with Access Capital, ICICI Prudential AMC, and Franklin Templeton AMC, all in very senior roles as CIO or CEO. Today, Nilesh Bhai is here to talk about a prospering India, inclusive and diversified. The stage is yours, Nilesh, sir. Thank you, Arish Bhai. Thank very good morning to all of you. Timer. Thank you, Karnataka Mutual Fund Distributor Association for inviting me over here. How many of you are believing that India will prosper? So then we can continue our tea break or coffee break because all of you are convinced. I needed at least one person to say that I am not convinced. Yes. So since we are in agreement that India will prosper, now let's focus on inclusive and diversified. How many of you are from uh, Kerala, having some background in Kerala? So I want to ask you one question. Kerala is the most educated state of India. It has the best human development index in India. And yet, when it comes to investment, you spend 15,000 crore a year in buying of lottery. In lottery, 100 rupees becomes 50 rupees guaranteed. In mutual fund, we make 100 rupees to sometimes 1,000 rupees. And yet, cumulative AUM of Kerala on retail side is just 12,000 crore after 30 years. Why do you think that is happening? I am not worried about fixed deposit. I am not worried about gold. I am not worried about real estate. But why do the most educated people of India prefer to invest 100 rupees so that it can become 50 rupees year after year and not invest in mutual fund which has made 100 rupees, 1000 rupees. How will we create inclusive India if we can't sell mutual funds to Keralites? That is the opportunity and that is the reality. Let's quickly go through prospering part of India because I had made that presentation without knowing your conviction. It's fair to say that global economy is in ICU. How many of you have not paid your electricity bill or telephone bill? Not even one person hurries by. If I had asked this question in New York, one-sixth of audience would have said, Sir, nahi bhara hai. This is America. All your cousins who are in New York and New Jersey, they are suffering from this. Right now it is wedding season in Bangalore also. Harish bhai, when you get a card, do you notice that in our card we write blessings only? And when you go, even with a flower bouquet, sometimes it is embarrassing to give on stage because no one is giving. Have you got this kind of wedding card ever? Anyone? No one? This is what is happening in America where people say, your presence is not important, your present is important. When you are happy, what do you do? Ma'am, when you are happy, what do you do? Talk a lot. When you are happy, what do you do? 
you spread happiness. So when you are happy, what do you do? Parties, yes. See, that's what we do when we are happy. We drink, we eat, we spread happiness, we talk to our friends. These are all the countries which are there in the global happiness index right at the top for year after year. Finland, Switzerland, Iceland, every land is happy there. But what do they do when they are happy? Can you guess? They take antidepressant medicines. The highest consumption of antidepressant medicine in all those countries which are the most happiest in the world. Arish bhai, aisa kabhi dekha hai? This is global economy. When people are happy, they have to take antidepressant medicines. In that context, we are doing well. When we are not doing well, we don't take antidepressant medicines. Globally, when people are happy, they have to take antidepressant medicines. We have done well. We are the only major economy in the world which has improved its debt to GDP ratio from subprime crisis to COVID crisis. Crisis separates men from boys. We are the only man in the world who has reduced its debt to GDP ratio. No other economy in the world has achieved this. Were you aware of this? Our media will never share this kind of good news with you. That's why you have to attend our presentation. We are not antidepressant people. How many of you believe in Rahu Kalam? I mean, everyone believes, but you know, people, some people are ashamed to raise their hand. Our Rahu Kalam starts when oil prices crosses $100 a barrel. In 2008, when oil crossed 100 our Sensex was about 8000 It happened because our economy was one-third of Brazil and Russian GDP put together. Our ability to bear pain of higher oil prices was limited. In 2022, when oil again touched $100 a barrel, what was our Nifty? Even Nifty didn't touch 8000 It happened because our economy now is more than the combined GDP of Brazil and Russia put together. Let's pray that next time when oil touches 100, we are double the size of Brazil and Russia put together, then our ability to withstand Rahu Kalam improves significantly. I was part of a CII delegation to US, and I used to get five minutes before finance minister to present India to global investors. This is what I used to present. In 2014, India was 10th largest economy. Today, it is 5th largest economy. IMF believes will become 3rd largest by 2028. Standard and, Standard and Poor believes will become 3rd largest by 2030. Some British Institute believes will do it in 2032. But no one is disputing that India will become 3rd largest economy over next decade or so. Our share in global GDP has moved from 2.6% to 3.4%. It is on its way to become 4.5% or 5% over next decade. We are the only economy in the world whose export share is less than the GDP share globally. That means we are growing in local markets rather than exporting. When the world wants to invest, we used to get $2 in 2014. Today, we are getting $7. In near future, we will go to probably $10. And large part of it is thanks to city like Bangalore. It is because of the entrepreneurs of Bangalore and Karnataka, 
which has created this kind of favorite destination for India in foreign direct investment. We were seventh largest auto manufacturer globally. Now we are fourth largest. Next year, we'll overtake Japan to become third largest. When we make motor cars, we sell in India and export less. When Japan makes motor car, they sell abroad more and sell less in Japan. We were fourth largest steel manufacturer, today we are second. We were twelfth largest mobile handset manufacturer, today we are second. In a year or two, we'll become the largest mobile handset manufacturer in the world, overtaking China. This I don't have to state in Bangalore. There are many more unicorns over here. From four to a century. Last year we created more unicorns than China, which is six times bigger than us. Our weight in Brazil, Russia, India, China club has moved from 14 to 29 percent. We have gone up. Every single country, Brazil, Russia, China, South Africa, has come down. In emerging market, we have doubled our market share. And year after year, we have improved in every governance parameters. This is the story of India. We believe India is prospering. This picture from Telangana portrays India perfectly. Pre-1991, we had potential but no prosperity. Post-1991, we have moved on the path of prosperity and slowly and steadily, we are climbing up. This step well in Telangana truly represents India prior to 1990 and India today. It is a work in progress. We are still a poor country, but compared to extreme poverty, now we are just poor. Despite yesterday's humiliating defeat against Bangladesh, we are still Sri Lanka, sorry. I still can't overcome semi-final loss of Bangladesh. But despite those occasional losses, India is top one, two or three cricket team in T20 in one day in test match. And this has happened because our players are consistently coming in number one, number two, number three. Be it Cheteshwar Pujara, be it Jasprit Bumrah, be it Surya Kumar Yadav. When your player goes up, your team goes up. Same thing is happening in India. Did you know that six out of top 10 fastest growing cities in the world are in India? Bangalore, Hyderabad, Delhi, Chennai, Mumbai, Kolkata. Three cities in India, in my opinion, Ahmedabad, Surat, and Jaipur, if they disclose what they were actually doing, will be fastest growing cities in the world. So effectively, nine out of top 10 fastest growing cities of the world are in India. If your cities are number one, can your country be behind? Look at this. The state from where I come, Maharashtra. Today, Maharashtra is equivalent to what was India in 2005. All of us put together what we produced in 2005, Maharashtra does today. Three states. Karnataka, Tamil Nadu, Gujarat, today are where whole of India was in 2001. Uttar Pradesh was combined economy then, UP and Uttarakhand. Today's UP and Uttarakhand is equivalent to 2001 of India. In 15, 20 years, these five states have become what was India then. Next 15, 20 years, will this five state become today's India? Yes or no? 
that means we are looking at 18 and a half trillion dollar economy five times today's india from just this five states my cities are becoming number one my states are becoming equivalent to what was my country just decade or half back now let's look at the company all of you know amul right we take immense pride in amul because it recruits people from rural background it recruits people from farming background and yet year after year it defeats multinational company like hindustan unilever hindustan unilever has produced 400 ceos and yet year after year amul sales is higher than hindustan unilever it is india's largest fmcg company with 61000 crore turnover in 2047, it wants to become world's largest food company with turnover of 18 lakh crore. This is the company, this is the cooperative society which has made India largest producer of milk in the world. When I talk about Switzerland, you'll think of a fat cow saying moo moo moo. The district of Anand produces more milk than entire Switzerland put together, thanks to Amul. In 1970, India was producing 16% of milk production of entire Europe. Thanks to Amul, today we produce one and a half times milk production of Europe. Can this company become world's largest food company? Answer is yes. And how many of you noticed, how many of you watched World Cup football? Ma'am, did you notice that the sponsor for Argentinian and Portugal team was Amul? It's already becoming a global company. Now imagine a country whose cities are number one in the world, whose states are becoming as big as the country and whose companies will become globally number one, can that country be left behind? Answer is no. That is why India will prosper. If you look at Indian cricket team, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s, we used to win occasionally. Today, we occasionally lose, like yesterday. This has happened because cricket shifted from Sivaji Park, Gymkhana, or urban India, Mumbai, Delhi, Kolkata, Chennai, to all the semi-urban and rural India. Someone from Surat, Baroda, Rajkot, Palkar are today playing in Indian cricket team. What happened in Indian cricket team, where players move from India to Bharat, is happening now in business. Look at entrepreneurs. The stockbroking was supposed to be domain of Gujarati and Marwadi. And Nitin Kamath and Nikhil Kamath in Bangalore created India's largest broking company. Who would have thought this was possible? In Nagpur, there is a company called Solar Explosives. Today, they have a market cap of 40,000 crore. It's one of our core holding for last decade entrepreneurs in various smaller towns are creating growth opportunity. We constantly hear that business is dominated by Ambani and Adani. But when we go on ground, we realize that every city, every town is producing entrepreneurs. Like when cricketers shifted from urban India to rural Bharat, we became number one test team, number one one day team, number one T20 team. Same thing is happening in business. There was a time when we used to import locomotives because we didn't know how to make powerful locomotives. Today, not only we make powerful locomotives, we also make entire train. How many of you have sat in Vande Bharat train or a Tejas train? Most of you haven't seen, most of you haven't said, 
I'll strongly recommend all of you to sit once in Vande Bharat train. You'll be immensely proud of what our engineers have done. This is as good as you will get in Switzerland or European community. We are moving from being net importer to net exporter. In 2014-15, we imported 90% of mobile phones bought in India. Today, we manufacture 90% of mobile phone bought in India, in India, and we export. From $8 billion imports in 2015, we have moved to $3 billion exports. Same thing is happening in toys. And Harish bhai, if you go from outside of Bangalore, there is a particular place where you get wooden toys. <laughs> go there and see, now in that town, people are exporting toys. We always knew these toys are good. Now the world is also knowing that toys made in this town is as good. There was a time when we had to pledge gold to borrow money. It was not long before, it was there in 1991. Today, despite running $150 billion plus trade deficit, we have fifth largest FX reserves in the world at $550 billion. And most importantly, please look at the third country, Switzerland. In their reserves, there are a lot of Indian reserves also included. <laughs> Someday, we'll be third largest FX holders in the world when those money come back. There was a time when our banks were told not to do business because they were always lending to Modi's and Choksi's and Malia's. Today, we have the lowest NPA in the world. Our banks have become fairly solid. How many of you believe in this equation 67 equal to 10? Harish, by mathematically possible? Answer is obviously no. But this is what is happening in India today. In power, we had 610, in coal, we were producing 610 million tons from time immemorial till 2013. 2024 will almost double it to 1,000 million ton. Our power capacity will jump from 223 gigawatts to 435 gigawatts, almost 100% more. Electrification, 20,000 kilometers to 52,000 kilometers. Road, 82,000 kilometers to 1,65,000 kilometers. Port cargo handling, 1,000 to 1,500. Medical sets, 52,000 to 90,000. What India built between 1947 to 2013, almost similar scale is being built between 2014 to 2024. That's why 67 equal to 10 is the right equation. And it's not that we are doing anything new. For 1800 years, India was number one economy in the world. We were 25% of global GDP. That's why Christopher Columbus came out of Spain to come to India. He didn't reach here, but he was in search of India. Did you hear Samji Bai, Ramji Bai going to Spain or Portugal in 16th century? Answer is no. Why will you go there? That's why Vasco de Gama came from Portugal to India. Because we were Sone Ki Chediya. Unfortunately, Britishers came, looted us. And for 200 years, our growth rate was zero. They sucked us so much that from 25% of global GDP, we became 1% of global GDP. We are going back where we belonged. We are capable of losing 
from the winning. And this match of Bangladesh where we had held them at 69 for 6 and yet we lost the match. India's path to prosperity is clear, but we can't become complacent. We all have to work. We all have to have the discipline. The discipline, when the bell rings, everyone should be inside the room. We can't be loitering outside. We can't run our conferences 15 minutes late. Harish Bhai is kind enough, he didn't cut my time. <laughs> this is the risk of self-goal which we are capable of scoring. Tata's went to Singur in West Bengal for setting up their nano factory plant. Five years they struggled, nothing came out. They went on a Suswagatam SMS to Sanan in Gujarat. In 18 months, nano cars started coming out. Nano was a failure, but Sanan wasn't a failure. Today, Sanan is prosperous. It has not become Singapore yet, but it is far better than Singur. If the whole of India follows Sanan model, there's no one who can stop us from prospering. If whole of India follows Singur model, there is no one who can help us prosper. We have to adopt right model. We have to work hard. We have to work in a disciplined manner. Hopefully there will be more Sanans in India and less Singur. The opportunity for India is this. In 1991, we had about $270 billion GDP and about $186 billion market cap. We have grown to be about $3.2 trillion GDP and $3.4 trillion market cap in about 30 years. Next 30 years, this $3 trillion can grow 10 times to become $30 trillion and you know what will happen to the market cap. What we have seen in slow motion over 30 years, we will see in fast forward in next 10 years. The size of making money over last 30 years was roughly about $3 trillion. The same opportunity to make money will be there in next 8, 10 or 12 years. And over next 30 years, there will be 10x opportunity to make money. If you didn't benefit from the past, doesn't matter. Same movie is going to be played in fast forward in next 10 years. Don't lose the opportunity. Now let's come to inclusive part. There was a company called Pearl Agrotech Limited. It was more North India based. It lost about 50,000 crore for about 6 crore investors. PSEL in those days had more investors than entire mutual fund industry put together. In National Spot Exchange, again people lost 5,000 crore. Agri Gold Group, again 6,300 crore. Who are the people who are losing money over here? They are not you and me. We do SIPs, right? These are the people who are at the bottom of the pyramid. They are your driver, my maid. They get lured by doubling of money overnight. And I'm not talking about crypto here. There are even educated people are losing money. The more educated, more losses. This is the people who need our help. India can become inclusive only if we all take the responsibility of spreading mutual fund to bottom end of the society. India cannot become inclusive on bank deposits, on insurance, on anything else but mutual fund. These are 
all the people at bottom of the pyramid which require your help, my help, so that we can create an inclusive India. How will we include these investors? Look at this. It's not the bottom end of the pyramid who needs our help. Even top end of the pyramid needs our help. Even the best of the people at top of the end end up losing their fortune. And which is where Sarthi Zaruri hai. Harish bhai, you can speak in what is written in Kannada, hopefully. I have one grudge against all of you. And I hope you will listen to it with open heart. Today, mutual fund distributors do a great job. And yet, it is not recognized as much as it should have been recognized. Partly this is happening because when our investors complain, they go and write to SEBI, they go and write in newspaper columns. But when our investors are happy, they don't write to regulator, they don't write in newspaper that thanks to this advice, my daughter's wedding is completed, my son's education is completed. The perception outside is that there are so much complaint against mutual fund. But if there are 16,000 complaints against 3.5 crore investors or 10 crore folios, I think we have done a great job. This was what I had tweeted. And I wrote, you need an advisor stroke MFT for the ch change from FT to mutual funds, from market timing to long-term investment, from lump sum to SIP investment. Look at the tweets and likes. If there were 5,000 likes, this would have become trending Twitter. If someone would have used this to tweet to SEBI or to the regulator, they would have noticed it. But there were only 14 retweets. And it's not as if there are many praises of mutual fund distributors on social media. But once in a while, if someone writes and there's no encouragement, what is the incentive for that person to repeat it? Harish Bhai, brand banana padega. Jo hum karte hai, wo hume dikhana padega. There's a saying which says that, jo bole, uske bor bikte hai. We believe our work will speak. Undoubtedly, good work is needed. But in today's world, you have to market it. I'll strongly recommend all of you Please request your satisfied customer to talk about your services, to talk about good work you have done. And when they talk about it, please highlight it. Please spread it. Ma'am, you said when you are happy, you try to spread happiness. Please spread this word of mouth publicity around so that people recognize what good work we are doing and how inclusive India will be created with mutual fund distributors. No insurance agent can claim that. No bank deposit seller can claim that. Only we will be able to claim that. We will deliver real return to investors. But we must highlight the good work done by us. If we do that, will we create a prosper India, prospering India, inclusive India? Undoubtedly, yes. Thank you. One, wonderful presentation, Nilesh Bhai. Superb. Masterly presentation. Thank you so much. That means it has reached you. Fantastic. Superb. So we got two lessons today, one about an inclusive India and second, how to make a presentation. Okay, how to engage the audience, how to use visuals, it's too good. Yes, Nilesh Bhai has got a badge, let's see what it says. A badge.
Okay, let, let me go and see what's written. Sarthi Zaruri hai. But the reason why Sarthi Zaruri hai is what he has written. He has written the art of wealth creation. Okay, so you, you can remove, you can remove a, a Shah from Gujarat, but you can't remove him from the art of wealth creation. Okay, that, that's in the blood. So, Nilesh Bhai, back on stage, may I invite Ramakrishna Kaluri, Secretary of uh, MAFDAC, as well as B.B. Maya from Mangaluru. Yes. Then Tejas Bhai and Deepak. Nilesh Bhai, you are too popular to be left alone. Oh. 